Okay, why is the defense so good while the offense fails? Is that a nice way to put it? Yeah, I know you got a few good players here like Moffa, who I think the world of, but n- n- I mean, come on. The defense, the defense is what Clemson is known for. It hasn't changed. The offense looks anemic, and the defense comes out there and beats the color out of your jersey. Welcome to Clemson Football Live. I'm Brian. I'm glad you're here. We're going to talk about the defense and why they have stayed consistent. They look like they're even from another team. And then our offense jogs out there. And, you, I mean, it's just, you know, you just kind of like, oh, God, please don't mess this up. You have one job. Don't mess it up. Your, your job is to score points for our team. Get into that in just a second. I hope you subscribe if you like what I'm doing. I've had a lot of people reach out to me, a lot of new viewers. I do appreciate it. And, and and it's always nice just to talk Clemson football, whether it's negative, whether it's positive. All I really care about is just talking about the truth here, okay? And if it's negative, you know, hunkering down and going, I believe everything's going to be okay because that makes me feel a good fan. Uh, be a good fan. Uh, the only thing that's going to happen is you're going to strain yourself so hard you're going to have hemorrhoids. That doesn't fix anything. But I'm glad you're here, even if you do have hemorrhoids. So, when Clemson won national championships in 16 and 18, the defense was absolutely ridiculous. You can't help but remember watching those teams come in and dominate world-class talent. Even some teams were even counted as once-in-a-lifetime talents. The year that Alabama got slacked by Clemson by four touchdowns, Earlier in the season, and listen, historians and especially SEC fans, they'll they'll say that's not the case. Uh, go go pull up all the ESPN glorified. Uh, d- uh, I wanted to say documentaries, but you know they're 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 little clips and stories they ran on that defense that year that Clemson schlacked by four touchdowns in the national championship. And you will hear them talk about that might have been one of the greatest by personnel defenses that uh, college football had ever seen. And then Clemson embarrassed them. But that Clemson offense went away. Very far exiled away. And us Clemson fans are sitting here grasping at straws. I mean, for goodness sake, Dabo Sweeney is an offensive man. He was a wide receivers coach before he ever took over the reins at Clemson. He played as a walk-on at Alabama back in the 90s, won a national championship as a walk-on for Gene Stallings. You would think that the offense would be just popping, but no, the defense is just absolutely killing it. We're still producing NFL talent, first, second, and third round NFL talent at Clemson, South Carolina. While the offense goes out there, trips over their own shoes, and then their pants comes down only to show their white butt to the nation. So, why is it? Well, first of all, we need to start with Wes Goodwin. He took over for Brent Venables. Brent Venables, we, I don't have to talk about him. You could easily say he's one of the, if not the best, position coach to ever coach at Clemson. In fact, I'll go that far to say he was. I say position coordinators is really what I mean to say. And if you want to talk about X's and O's, he probably is the best coach to ever coach at Clemson. But he threw the keys to the car to Wes Goodwin. Now let's pause there. A lot of people, when they take over for a coordinator, especially the man, at first, they can kind of fake it, but they eventually run the car off the road. That was running so well, they mess it up. Now, I will tell you this. I've had very little criticism of Wes Goodwin over the past few years that he's been running things. I will tell you also... Uh, that I did come down pretty hard on Wes Goodwin during the Florida State game. He was blitzing almost every play, and it was, drum roll please, blah, 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 working. It was only when he backed off and gave uh, uh, Jordan Travis a time to regain his consciousness that he found one of those giants called wide receivers running down the field. He ended up giving up 14 points in the, I think it was 14 points in the last minutes of the first half. 
Now, all the while, Dabo Sweeney became publicly irritated with Wes Goodwin. But we don't see him get as irritated with his offense that sucks. That's another story for another time or maybe later on in this video. But overall, Wes Goodwin has produced. Wes Goodwin spent time in the NFL. Wes Goodwin has been praised by Brent Venables. Uh, I'm, I'm, on the, um, I'm on the Clemson Tigers website right now. And he worked as an assistant to head coach Bruce Arians from 15 to 17. So th this guy has been around some pretty doggone important people. And then he took over at Clemson. It's not like he played football at Clemson, professed his love for orange and white, went on and played a couple of seasons in the NFL, and then came back with no coaching experience. It's not like there's a cryptic message there that I'm saying that has costed us. What I am saying, Wes Goodwin knows what he's doing. What about Nick Eason? Yeah, Nick Eason played for the Clemson Tigers way back when, but he left. He went out and played in the NFL. He coached at Auburn. He's, he's had, I don't want to misspeak here, I want to say he had other coaching stops. And I want to say he coached in the NFL some. And now he's at Clemson. Now, I don't know if this is true or not. Y'all correct me. I know you will, probably in the most harshest terms, but go for it. I do believe it was Nick Eason that went to Dabo during the 2022 game at Notre Dame where the offense looked like a recreation team. When I believe it was Nick Eason that went to him and said, you've got to do something about your offense. Something's got to give, basically. Good for Nick. I just hope he didn't decide to call into the call-in show. Mike Reed has been around for a while. He coached at NC State before coming to Clemson. Some people don't like Mike Reed. I've had some people say that we need to replace him. But I can tell you right now, some of those very same people would say that we need to leave other people alone that still own the offensive staff. Yes, the same offensive staff that is guiding this terrible offense. Now, pause there. When I talk about terrible offense... I am not blaming guys like Maffa, Brennan Stuhl, or even Cade for that. See, these guys can only go as far as their leadership can take them. Yeah, there's a certain level that a player has to own, has to own of the, their, what they're supposed to do and their preparation and the decisions they make when they're out there. But if your leadership cannot challenge you properly, good luck. You better be good at self-developing. But the defense, the defense is still coming out there recruiting four- and five-star players and even developing two- and three-stars to go out there and absolutely lay the hammer down. What about Coach Rumpf coming back? Now, some people really wasn't thrilled about that. I'll go ahead and tell you. If you look through my comment section and other comment sections, whether it's on YouTube or whether it's on Clemson Media Outlets, you'll hear some people say they're not glad that Rumpf is back. Until he messes up something, welcome, friend. Of course, Wes Goodwin is the linebackers coach as well. They haven't done too shabby. You haven't seen them fall off. You don't see them falling apart. Why is the defense so flipping good? Why has the transfer portal not affected the defense? Because every... Oh, God. This is a moment. This is the airing of the grievances. Y'all just... I'm having an episode here. Maybe too much caffeine this morning. I've already been on two calls this morning. So it's just... just I've got a break and then I've got another call here. At, another call here in a couple hours. So here we go. Lord help me. I saw, and I might do a video on this, where someone who's very, very well known in the community of sports, and they are backed by a massive network. They make a lot of money doing this, and hey, good for them. I, I'm totally fine with that. I have a hair that's just absolutely driving me crazy. Talk about Dabo Sweeney and Willie finally dive into the transfer portal. The transfer portal is not Dabo Sweeney's problem, sir. His problem is that he went out and hired a bunch of people who drove through Clemson one time who said they love Clemson and 
hire them as coaches on his offensive coaching staff. A great proving of what I just said is the defense. Has the transfer portal affected Clemson's defense? No. If the transfer portal was just the great undermining, the ingrown toenail in Clemson football, why? Okay, it would have only affected, it wouldn't have only affected the offense, it would have affected the defense too. It makes for a great talking point to get people to click on videos. Trust me, I do that sometimes. And anybody you listen to or watch, they do it too. Why? Because I can post certain topics on here, and it can be all bubbly and happy. I had someone say, why don't you do something? What's right with Clemson's uh, football team? I did that video about a month ago. Hardly any of you watched it. I mean, it was like significantly less views than the video of what's wrong with Clemson. And it's not just isolated to Clemson. This is anywhere. Anyone. Any topic. It's good for, it's good for clicks, but I'm telling you, telling you this. When you are trying to analyze what is wrong with Clemson football, that is a terrible way to go after it. Now, I know a few of you disagree with me on the transfer portal. I'm not attacking you. I am talking about this very well-known person who makes a lot of money doing what I do, but they do it for a network talking about this. If the transfer portal was a problem, Clemson's defense wouldn't be so good. It would be just like the offense falling apart, held together by hopes, dreams, film off, and some duct tape. That's it. Clemson's defense is so good because they have experienced coaches on that side of the football. Logical. It makes sense. It 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 just I'm, unfortunately sometimes it's that simple. Sometimes it's that simple as Dabo Sweeney using his clout, calling somebody and saying, Hey, we have a position that's coming open on the team, and we really like your style. Would you want to join the Clemson Tigers? Now I had one viewer back during the whole Tyler from Spartanburg debacle, say to me, you make it sound way too easy of trying to go out and get a coach. But then we hear about Garrett Riley and Matt Luke. They're, they're recalling of receiving a call from Dabo Sweeney or a text from Dabo Sweeney. They were thrilled. Thrilled. Meaning Dabo still holds clout for now. You continue to lose games and go to the Gator Bowl, that clout will go bye-bye. By the way, just for a reality check for you, the 2016 season was almost eight years ago. So we're going on a decade. 2018 season, for some of you who still, you know, drunk from that win in Santa Clara, it's almost six years ago. So we're getting farther and farther out and that means that the collateral and the brand awareness and recognition and the power of the brand, the farther and farther it gets away from 16 and 18, the less powerful it is. It's like talking to a kid about Dan Marino. You and I, most of us, and, and I look at the analytics and the ages who watches my videos, most of my viewers knows who Dan Marino is, and remembers him playing. Some might even went and watch Marino play. You say Dan Marino to most top recruits right now, they might have heard of him. They know nothing about him. John Elway, nope, heard about him. Randall Cunningham, Warren Moon, eh, heard about him. You tell them that Trent Dilfer won a Super Bowl, they're like, Trent who? Didn't he sing with a boy band? See, my, see, see that's, that's what happens. Sweeney could call whoever he wanted to to coach on his offensive staff, and I'll about guarantee he'd get them. That's why the defense is so good. Because 
He hired Nick Eason. Yeah, Nick's a Clemson boy. I mean, Nick's really good at what he does. Wes Goodwin is really good at what he does. I'm waiting on the day. If he continues on the path that he's on right now, somebody's going to come calling for Wes Goodwin. If he does well this year, don't be surprised if someone comes along and says, Wes Goodwin, we like your demeanor. We like your leadership. We like, mo- listen to me, listen. Most of all, we like your results. Would you come coach our team? Don't be shocked when Wes, quiet in nature, goes, absolutely. Don't blame him. The reason our defense is so good and we can recruit three, four, and five-star players, and they don't fall off like they do on the offense. Our offensive line has four and five-star players on it who looks as one-star-ish as possible. How does that happen? We have three straight quarterbacks. DJ, a high five-star. I mean, he was, what, the number two recruit only behind, what, Bryce Young? What happened to DJ? Oh, it was just it was just bad luck. People talk trash about DJ. Cade Klubnick, people are already turned on him. I haven't turned on him. I just said Trent Pyramid outplayed both he and Vizina. And he did. Played by the same rules, played missing the same wide receivers. Had to worry about getting tagged by a pinky and Sweeney blowing a whistle, screaming, Sack! 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 I got a sack! He had to play by those same rules. Didn't face him, did it? Didn't. But Cade, Cade had great experience coming out of high school. What's happened to him? Vizina, a four-star out of Alabama. What's happened to him? Why is the defense so good? Why is their four and five stars not falling apart? Leadership. Coaching matters, folks. Coaching matters, coaching matters, coaching matters. When I think about football, coaching matters. When I've coached my sons in football, I realize if I call a dumb play and they do exactly what I say, that's on me. In fact, I have coached my son before, called a play, He did exactly what, he and his teammates did exactly what I called, and it failed, and they walked down, they would walk to the sideline with their head down, and I look at them and go, hey, pick your head up. You did a good job. I should have called a better play. That's how, listen to me, folks, that's how it's supposed to be. Own it, baby. Get into the comments section. Ridge Runner, the defensive coaching staff, you're right. KC, KC, it wasn't the 18 Alabama defense that was so great. It was the 16. Okie dokie. Richard uh, Johnson, can we get Spiller out of the running back room? Here's the the problem. Here's the problem. Spiller's a great guy. I talked about this a couple of days ago. My great-grandmother lost her in 06, and I'm using this example purposely. I love my great-grandmother. Miss her every day. If she could come back today and somebody say, you know what? For some weird reason. We want to make your great grandmother the running backs coach at Clemson. I'd go, she's a sweet woman. I'd dive in front of a moving bus for her. Please don't put her as our running backs coach because she's not qualified. I'm not saying Spiller's not qualified, but his first his first move, he ran off Lynn J. Dixon, and Lynn J was fine until Spiller got here. And then I wonder what went on with Shipley. But I'll leave Spiller alone. Grip uh, Tyler Grisham, mm, living on borrowed time. John Drys, support y'all getting out of the ACC. Christian, coaching matter matters. Facts, yep. Richard, the great point, Richard. Used to, Clemson used to get three and four star players to play four and five star, like four and five stars. Now we get four and five star players to play like, yeah, we get them to digress. And I'll tell you, you're going to get you're going to get a scarlet letter on your back, to where people says, hey, you want to go play quarterback at Clemson? Look what happened to DJ. Look what happened to Clubnick. Look what happened to 
Look what happened to uh, Lizina. You really want to go play there? Well, why's Pyramid so good? Huh? Well, his dad has been in football his entire flipping life, has been with Clemson his entire flipping life, other than what, what Alabama? Trent Pyramid is, is, is eat, sleeps, breathe football whether he wants to or not. It's probably a, there's probably some type of football drill he has to run just to go take a dump. So that's the reason he, he looks like he knows what he's doing, because he does whether he wants to or not. I'm going to close this sucker down. Why's Clemson's defense so good? Again, coaching matters. It does. And if it doesn't, why are we paying them to be specialists? Specialists are paid a lot of money. Why? Because they have a specialty. They know how to do a specific thing very well that others really don't know how to do. Yeah, sure, you've got a bunch of people who are coaches, quote-unquote coaches, up at your local high school, but are they at the level that you should shell out hundreds of thousands, even into millions of dollars to them? The answer is no. So if there's no specialty there, why are they being paid so much? Hustler, Hustler Inc. Lynn J. Dixon had a bad attitude. He went on a lengthy arrest re record after Clemson and various behavior issues. I hate that for him. I hate that for him. It's just odd to me that he was, he was totally fine until we changed running back coaches. Maybe it discouraged him. I mean, you're still responsible for your, your actions. I'm a firm believer in that. I'm a firm believer in that. But I've heard you say lack of developing players is a big issue, and I agree. Do you feel some of the coaches have lost their hunger for the game, or they just aren't that good? Uh, that, that's, a, that's a great question. Uh, I, I, believe, I believe in the years. Everybody, when you talk about Tony Elliott, people sit up straight. I think that Tony and Jeff together were brilliant. I think Tony alone was not as good as everybody thought he was. Because when he was alone, you saw the team start doing this. And 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 when you heard his explanation of not running uh Travis Etienne against LSU, remember Clemson was up 17 to 7 against LSU with 945 left in the first half. So it wasn't like LSU came in there and was just beating the brakes off of them. Remember, remember Tony saying, oh, yeah, we forsook the run. How do you forsake the run with Travis Etienne? It's a one-two punch. And then you saw, I'm just telling you, I think that Elliot and Scott were great together. Apart, I'll leave Scott out of that because South Florida is a tough job. Virginia is a tough job. So I'm going to be careful what I say about Tony. But I think there was a level of maybe complacency that set in. To answer your initial question, using that as a template and a, the way that I'm analyzing this, it's a lack of experience first. And second, second, um, I believe some of the, the some of the experienced guys dear, before they moved on, I, I really believe that they became complacent and they read their own their own uh, uh, newspaper writings. We're great. We're awesome. This says it. Oh, look at those trophies. They're awesome. They're wonderful. I love Sweeney, and I appreciate what he's done. But the man can't stop talking about how many players he graduated with sociology and criminology degrees. I mean, it's great to it, it, that's great and stuff, but used to the deal was you had to be a good player who took your education seriously, who I wish I had a third hand, uh, who also was a really good football player. And now, because the football play on the offensive side is not what it was, now we're just going to focus on how many players we've graduated and that they're good people. And if you complain, well, then all of a sudden, you're a terrible person. You're an awful person who has poor priorities, and you're a brat, and you're spoiled. And Clemson, that's where we're at in that philosophy. Going down through here, answering a few more questions. Hopefully, I can answer some of these questions. I feel we may have just struck out on some of these offensive linemen. They, 
that may hustle not have it if it's terrible this year under Matt Luke. I'm not blaming him. I don't blame Matt Luke because he's having to retrain reaction time. A lot of people don't want to accept this. Reaction time is a big deal for practicing and running dr- it is is the reaction time is developed by practicing and running drills over and over and over. You're you're drilled by the drills, right? And then to where you get into games you're playing against Florida State, Notre Dame, uh, name any team worth their weight in salt, NC State, and you don't have to you don't have time to think about what you're going to do. You go out there and you execute what you've been practicing. If what you've been practicing and the drills you've been running is not effective. The other guy got you. He beat you. And he's on defense having to guess what play you're running. I, I don't blame Matt Luke. Hustler Inc. Troy Stilato is going to shock a lot of people this season. Hey, I pull him for Troy Stilato. The guy can stay healthy. Did you, that was his first healthy season in 23. Did you see how he caught the football? Oh, wow. Sure, hands. There's guys dropping passes here and there. That would be wide open. And that's another thing about Cade. I will say this. There, there was drops by the wide receivers this week. In, in spring practice, spring game, spring scrimmage, whatever you want to call it. Dropping balls. We saw it last year. We even saw Bo Collins drop a pass last year. I know he's at Notre Dame now, and I liked Bo. And I, and I hope he does well. But we saw drop passes last year. That's not on Cade, folks. He hits you right in the numbers, and you drop it, and you're on scholarship. That's your, you had one job, catch the pass. David Wood, we had great play design with Scott. A lot of people forget that he was very good at, at designing plays. We have way too many inexperienced people on staff, especially in the analyst room and player development. I have to take a look at that a little more. Some questions about Jeff Scott and his and his coachability. Um, when Scott was there, I, I've, I've uh, I'll, I'll tell you this, uh, Scott. I I don't care if he starched everyone's underwear at Clemson. Jeff Scott, when he was there, something was different. I don't care if he. Picked up donuts from Krispy Kreme and brought them in. Hot and fresh now. And he gave them to them. And that's all he did. And it inspired them to come out there and play their butts off. I don't care. Why? Why? Because. Something he did was different. Stephen Clyde, I hope I didn't butcher your name. Breaking on you a little bit. Love your honesty. Please don't change. Thanks, Stephen. I appreciate it. A lot of people, not a lot, some people don't appreciate the honesty. Folks, I, I'll tell you this. I don't come on here to be some type of jerk or to criticize a man who gave us two national championships and six consecutive playoff appearances in, what, 12, 10-plus win seasons just to be a jerk and be a know-it-all. Dabo Sweeney has done more for Clemson than anybody. Okay? I just, I believe that if you are worthy of the praise if you start doing stuff that is outside of what got you to winning, people need to say something because, well, you say you want to be the best, and the only way you can be the best is to get rid of poor practice. And uh, I've heard people who I even respect and like say, Dabo Sweeney can hire whoever he wants and basically can do whatever he wants. Well, folks, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to start to bring this to a close. I see there's 53 of you in here. I hope you leave a comment. Uh, I hope you hit the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It's free. If you want to support the channel on a monthly basis, there's a join button below the video. People on Apple iPhones, for some reason, you won't see it. Uh, but it's there. $3 or $5 per month. You let me know. Or you you do what you will there. Parker Henderson, one of my uh, friends and supporters of the Clemson Football Live channel, said, man, I don't even notice it coming out. Uh, John, Big John Sitton said the same thing. So I appreciate it. And last but not least, I have joined the college huddle. I am actually representing Clemson. They uh, reached out to me a while back and said, hey, we really like what you do, how you do it, and we'd like for you to be a part of this, and you be the Clemson representative. And I said, 
I said, well, uh, sure, sure. I, I, I'd love to do it. I don't know how Clemson feels about me doing that, but it said it will be here next month. That's from last month. The Join the College Huddle, I will be uh, sharing with you uh, more information about that. Here's my final thought, and I hope you'll stick with me and pass this along, all that bunch of good crap. I said before with this that people who I have respect for and I like, uh, they've made a comment that I disagree with. And by the way, that used to be a, a great thing about our society. You could disagree with somebody and still be friends. You could have a heated discussion and then come away from it and say, hey, I may not like your opinion, but I respect you. I don't respect your opinion. I respect you. I like you. Or I disagree with your opinion. I'm, I'm saying too much here, but I'm just saying you still agree with somebody. You're still, or you agree that you're friends and, and you're not getting personal. That's what I'm trying to say. You're still friends. You can disagree. It's no biggie. But I've heard people, and, and actually, I, I heard this in a video about a month and a half ago, about a month ago. Someone who I respect said Dabo Swinney can hire whoever he wants. And basically can do whatever he wants. Well, folks, I can tell you from my years of being, I'm a musician first and foremost. I'm, I play here and there, but I used to pursue it heavily. And I can tell you just a little insight on me. I used to work with brilliant people, people who's played on massive projects. And those people, their, their regimen, their, uh, their practice regimen, the way that they worked, and they're successful and made a lot of money from it. They couldn't come and go as they please. No matter how successful they became, they realized there is a specific set of rules and strategy that you have to follow to continue to be successful. If you ever get to the point to where you feel like you have earned your way to do anything, then suddenly you fall apart and you won't be working anymore. Also, I've worked in the corporate. That's what I do now. I work in the corporate world. What do we learn from the corporate world? We've seen this with large companies throughout time. Companies that were once flourishing, that now they're bankrupt. What happened to them? Well, they started, they started believing the, the, that they were invincible and that they could hire who they wanted and, and they could come and go as they please. And they could start investing money into projects that doesn't make sense, but because we think it. You see how many degrees I have and where I went to school? And how much money I have, and I have a wife and a girlfriend, and they're both beautiful. You're a loser. You're a peon. Go away. You don't know what you're talking about. And then suddenly their business falls apart. Why? Because no matter how successful you are, you can never, ever, if you want to be, let me, here's the caveat. If you want to continue to be successful, you have to realize you can't do whatever you want or else. And that's the only thing that I, the only criticism that I have of Sweeney. People do make mistakes, and he is trying. I can see that he's trying to correct it. I think he's correcting it one piece at a time, one year at a time, and I just think that it's not working. It's not working out well. Uh, I think that these changes probably should have been made a few years ago, and hired in immediate experience like that at all levels, on the offensive side of the ball. But I appreciate what Coach Sweeney has done. Uh, but but. It's, I mean, like Matt Luke. Matt Luke is literally having to retrain guys how to think and how to react. And some of them are beyond saving. I'm not going to call any names, but be, you can watch them play. Some of them are beyond saving and, and revamping. He's just going to have to recruit as many good players as he can and, and take them and mold them and form them because these other guys have been molded and formed, but in a wrong way. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments below. Trust me, I know you'll tell me exactly what you think. I look forward to seeing you next time. As always, go Tigers.